Yo, Elon, I think you got to pick a spot quick, okay? You got over a half a million people who want a Cybertruck by the end of next year, and you're probably gonna need a factory for it. So make up your mind, please, quick. I'm sure they're weighing out all the pros and cons of different locations, looking at the different incentives other states are offering, but yeah, my best guess as to why Tesla thinks they're still going to be able to deliver vehicles by the end of 2021, despite not having a factory for them yet, is because I think the Tesla Cybertruck is going to be their second attempt at an autonomous assembly line. Or I should say, a majority autonomous assembly line because they really wanted to do that with the Tesla Model 3 and I think the reason they had to go through production hell and they figured out that oh man it's gonna be a lot harder to actually get robots to plug things in with the new wiring infrastructure and handle all of this complex manufacturing so that we can have an assembly line that's almost just running by itself the fact that they weren't able to achieve what they wanted through the production assembly process I think is part of the reason the Model 3 ended up being a lot more expensive than Tesla originally promised promised. So my guess is the drastic design choices they made with the Cybertruck that make it look so bizarre, but are also very, very functional and probably easy to do for robots, Cybertruck will be that followed up attempt in seeing, okay, can we actually make assembly lines with very little human involvement because there will be a lot of welding involved with the stainless steel exoskeleton and with new wiring infrastructure we've seen Tesla working on for a long time that they will more than likely be implementing with the Cybertruck. Possibly they've already implemented it with the Model Y using much less wiring and manufacturing could mean that robots are able to do a lot more manufacturing than they can right now. If you look at the Model 3 factory, there's a lot of human involvement, and Elon Musk himself even said that humans are underrated when it comes to being able to scale production in a cost-effective manner. Apparently, humans were able to do it cheaper than robots could, but maybe it was because of the rather traditional and standard-looking design of the Tesla Model 3. Still a very good-looking car, but maybe you need something drastic. Maybe you need something really bizarre like the Cybertruck in order to get to a point where, yeah, robots can just kind of move steel and material down this assembly line and easily start pumping out vehicles. This can help them achieve that far lower starting price of the Cybertruck that they're hoping to reach of $40,000, but also leave plenty of money left over for things like the interior and that giant battery pack, which is by far the most expensive part of this vehicle. So given they want that triple motor Cybertruck to go 500 miles on a single charge, but they're only going to charge $70,000 for that truck, it makes a lot of sense that they need to look at every possible measure in the manufacturing line of how do we save money, which is how I brought up in previous videos. Not having a paint job saves them a ton of time, and this very, very simple design, because it is a low polygon count, means that while the factory location has not been decided on yet, and they're weighing out their options with other states, while we do know it'll be central U.S., I think that they'll be able to get this factory up and running and pumping out Cybertrucks a lot faster than traditional gigafactories in the past, because it will require require less square footage. It won't require as much space because they know, at least in the beginning of this Gigafactory's life, if its primary focus is just the Cybertruck, given we already have Model Y production at the Fremont factory, and they've already started tackling Model Y production at Giga Berlin and Giga Shanghai, Model Y production is not going to need a ton of help for the time being, but Cybertruck production is probably going to be so drastically different from all of their other vehicles that starting a new one up from scratch and maybe relying much more on autonomous bots to do a lot of the welding and a lot of the wiring installation is going to be how they save so much money in the long run on the production of the Cybertruck. And I think deep down, Elon still thinks that's the future. You know, they kind of had to cave in and say, all right, we got to rely on people to help us build the Model 3 because that's the only way we can reach our schedule of being able to deliver these things when we said we would. So they caved in, but I still think at the end of the day, Tesla believes that it would be a much simpler assembly process if it could be done more autonomously. It may be hard to set up, but once you get it going, it would more than likely save them on money potentially. If done right, it could save on time and it could result in the factory lasting a lot longer, especially during pandemics like the one we're going through right now where people have to be isolated and self-quarantined. If in situations like that, you didn't have to worry about it because the assembly line was kind of just doing its thing, there are still a ton of benefits to not using humans in an assembly process. So I think Tesla is still heading in that direction and the Cybertruck may be the first reattempt at making an assembly line that needs very little human involvement involvement, but I'm curious to see what you guys think. So do you think the Cybertruck is going to be mainly autonomous built, or is a lot of manned operations still going to be involved? Let me know what you're thinking down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have an excellent day. Take care.